welcome to Spotlight, where we feature the new College of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences at the University of Central Arkansas. I'm Donna Lamkin Stevens. Joining me today is our uh, new old dean, uh, Tom Williams, who is the was the dean of the College of Liberal Arts before we made the combination in, with College of Fine Arts and Communication into our new college. So, Tom, welcome. Thank you, Donna. It's always good to be here on Spotlight. Oh boy, and hasn't. <laughs> Hasn't the world changed since we were here last? <laughs> uh, what, uh, 18, yeah. 18 months ago, we were talking about this, yep. mm -hmm. um, and then the pandemic hit, but the combination continued. So talk a little bit about, um, you know, um, the formation of the new college. Let's, right. let's uh, talk about the background. Right, and I think that, you know, one of the things that we kind of overlook is like this last year, um, so many things were happening at UCA, and they all fell into the background of just trying to have an almost sort of week-to-week, day-to-day <laughs> operation. Um, and all we are is a, a College of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences, which, as I look out over the land, is not altogether an uncommon mm -hmm. um, organization for a college. And I think that what the, the kind of previous split points to <clears throat> is just some particulars in the history of UCA personalities. Um, you know, there, there, there are some things that there are some things about UCA that are very particular. For instance, English is at the University of Central Arkansas a purely liter literature mm -hmm. based um, department. Uh, just up the road at Fayetteville and even Jonesboro, English department also has uh, rhetoric and composition and it also has creative writing. Whereas we have rhetoric and composition in, or writing in uh, your school of communication and creative writing in uh, Chair Metter's um, <laughs> film theater and creative writing. So there's some particulars about UCA, but really, I mean, this really just sort of represents a gathering together of departments and disciplines that you would often see together. And what's most important about it here is that it really gives us an opportunity to see what a College of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences might be like in this new century with all of the ways that things are coming together and interdisciplinarily and um, otherwise. I mean, it's just to me, it's just, it's just incredibly exciting. It's been one of the things that even during the pandemic, one of the things that kind of kept me but it's, it's funny because it's like it kept me awake at night and also woke me up in the morning, you know, happy is to think about, you know, just what we can do um, that makes things particular to UCA and gives our students opportunities that they might not have at other institutions. Mm -hmm. it, it seems to me looking, I mean, you were hired under the old College of Liberal Arts. Mm -hmm. I was hired in 1999 under the old College of Fine Arts and Communication. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but in 2016, CFAC underwent a, a realignment, exactly. which seemed to get like like-minded disciplines together even more. Mm -hmm. So the school of communication gathered journalism, public relations, right. communication, right. and writing, uh, professional technical writing. So right. uh, I kind of see that on a larger scale with with our with the college realignment. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk a little bit about so so the old CFAC included right. uh, the school of communication, departments of art. And, and now art and design. Design, yeah. And uh, film, theater, creative writing, and music. Right. And CLA, there were, there were what, six. six departments? So there was English, history, philosophy, and religion, political science, languages, linguistics, literatures, and cultures, which is one department, and um, <laughs> sociology, criminology, and anthropology, also one department. So. Um, Humanities and social sciences, yeah, essentially. Yeah, yeah. So I can see, I mean, just off the top of my head, I can see all kinds of. Um, I mean, I I do journalism history, right? So we have a, a, a obvious uh, contact with with the history department mm -hmm. and political science. My my mm -hmm. class uh, uh, delves into a lot of political science and journalism. I, and we had we had conversations when I first got here, and they were kind of routed through Jeremy Gillum, our um, 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 you know kind of legislative mm -hmm. liaison, uh, at UCA about how, how much he uh, wanted to be a part of um, 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 
we had an initiative going on that sadly was kind of, um, its momentum was stalled because of the pandemic. Um, but uh, where Jeremy was saying that, you know, like one of the things that he saw as a real opportunity is getting some of our political science and journalism people together so that, the, so, that, so that students would be able to kind of have a better sense when they went into maybe reporting mm -hmm. of the kind of, um, uh, you know, just the, the political system that we have you know, both in the state and federal, um, just to, to have, I mean, I don't want to demean the work of uh, the previous students, but, you know, just better informed politically sure, um, sure. Uh, journalists, journalists. And th it's, it's that kind of thing that, I mean, in, <laughs> I, I, I get in trouble for things like this sometimes because I, I don't want to I don't want to I don't want to kind of like I said demean or diminish anything that's come before. But one of the things that I think is 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 probably a an issue that that everybody needs to be concerned with is you know the integrity of a discipline of a depart or a department. Um, I think that's really important, but I think what's more important is that we produce students who can enter either graduate school or the workplace with an advantage. Yes. And I think the advantage that students uh, that our students will have is that they come out no matter what their department no matter what their major, they come out as great communicators, both in the written form and in the in the oral form. That they're that they that they work well in teams, both as mm -hmm. a sort of team member, but also a leader. Um, and that they you know they have they have good research skills. That they know they know how to go beyond just googling to get you know like mm -hmm. the in in depth research. Um, you know, years ago uh, at another institution I was at, you know, I had a. a, a, a uh, dean of Student Success said that the one common factor in a bunch of job ads, just like every job ad that they had sort of looked at, was that people needed to be able to use Excel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was the only <laughs> common thing. And everything else was a, was, came from a variety of that, you know, need good writing skills, good communication skills, work in teams and things like that. And um, if at the end of the day, we can find ways for all of our students, no matter what their discipline, no matter what their major, to kind of arrive at that sort of skill set, then that's, then we're doing well. Mm -hmm. You know, we can preserve the integrity of the disciplines in other ways. And I think that's, and I still think that's important, but our main measure of success is student success, sure. both completing a degree, but also going out into the world of work or graduate school and being successful in those arenas. Well, let's talk, and we're going to go into more detail uh, in, in future shows, but yeah. let's talk a little bit about uh, sort of the best of both before. Oh, yeah. So uh, what, what is carrying over from the old CLA? Well, from the old CLA, I think what's carrying, I mean, one thing that, one thing that, both, that both colleges had is extraordinary faculty. Mm -hmm. um, I have said this time and time again, this is my fifth stop in terms of, a, in terms of an academic institution. And I have never seen consistent excellence across the board from senior faculty to you know, people who are teaching their first and second year. I've never seen anything like I've seen at UCA. So we come with excellent faculty. We also come um, in the classroom, but we also come with faculty who've done uh, remarkable things in their scholarship. Um, there are a number of um, uh, faculty, again, but senior, junior levels who have published books, who have published articles, who are you know, kind of exploring, exploring um, uh, facets of their um, uh, research areas in ways that are kind of drawing uh, a, a great interest from, uh, from outside um, uh, uh, Arkansas and beyond. Um, and uh, I think that more than anything, what we've got from from the from those humanities and social sciences is a real commitment again to to student success and um, I could I could go could go by go, could go down to each uh, each department I mean one of the things that I've talked about the English department the English department is really doing doing um, incredible things with this graduate program 
When, we, when I started here, um, there were maybe 10 or 11 students, and now we're up to 17. Oh, and uh, that's a lot of the work of uh, uh, the chair, Ty Hawkins, and the um, uh, uh, graduate coordinator, Lori Level. They're out there, you know, kind of beating the proverbial bushes to get students to come here. And once the students come here, they see kind of, you know, that, that again, some of these things about the, about the, the faculty. Um, you know, Raymond Fontaine, who is uh, uh, near the end of his uh, career at UCA, is, um, uh, he's uh, worked on um, a kind of Oh, he's published a book on Terence McNally, the the playwright, and he's also d completed a work with with the help of a lot of UCA students on the John Donne's Variorium, which is mm -hmm. a kind of a work of um, uh, of, of poetry of, of great substance and and, and value, and um, uh, you know just these kind of things. What what happens, and I think it happens in both both former uh, colleges, is what happens is that students get really great opportunities to work one on one with people who are not only great teachers in the classroom but are making ex extraordinary strides in their scholarship and research. And I would say the same thing from the College of Fine Arts, the former College of yes. Fine Arts and Communications. Yes. And that's just and that. And what I kind of again insist upon is, I mean, the students kind of, I mean, if, if this is your reality, you don't think about it as being anything extraordinary or remarkable. But I kind of always insist is that you don't get this kind of opportunity just at every institution in the state and beyond. Yeah. We're spoiled. Yeah. We really are. I think so. I think so. So, uh, so from the old CFAC, mm -hmm. we're going to bring over uh, the Artist in Residence program. Right. And it's going to be expanded. Mm -hmm. And uh, Gail Seymour will be with us uh, in another program to talk, to go into more detail about this schedule. But what can you, what can you say about the whole Artist in Residence program and how right. it can be expanded with these all these new with the new with mm -hmm. the new partners. I think one thing is is one thing to, to to again assert very loudly is that the Artist in Residence program is for all students. Yes, it is not for students who are interested in the arts it, uh, only. It is not for um, majors in CAHSS. It is for all students, and I think more than any time. The artist in residence program sort of places itself in a way that, I mean, we've got a lot of people who are hungry for events, yeah. hungry to come out, hungry to see people, hungry to hear music, hungry to, you know, go to lectures, hungry to hear readings. And this is for any student at UCA, any major, commuter, a mm -hmm. mature student. You know, no matter whom you are, you, p you pay uh, as part of your fees, the uh, artist in residence fee, and you should take advantage of it because this is again, I can, I mean, I can remember, this is my parent parenthetical, I can remember being an undergraduate and you know, things happening all the time on my campus and not going to them yeah. and then getting and then finishing up and thinking like, why didn't I go to these things? What was I doing? I was like sitting around watching TV or, <laughs> you know. Um, doing laundry, some you know, kind of pedestrian things. And these are the things that you don't want to be looking at upon commencement saying like, why didn't I do these mm -hmm. things? Because they're here, they are, they are free in the sense that you don't have to pay a, 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 an admission or anything. And again, they are of artists selected from, and this one is an international, we have an international roster of artists this year, um, but artists of, of great achievement um, from across the world, and they're coming to Conway, and they're coming to do their thing for UCA students, and also the Conway um, uh, Because each audience. one has to have a public uh, mm -hmm. Performance right. aspect to it, right? Exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. So it's free to. So it's free yeah. for everybody. Yeah. So, so that's the that's the that's the first thing. The other thing is what what happens by having. Um, and Dr. Seymour will go into the, into more depth about the actual process, but by having just more participants, that is having um, other departments um, applying. Mm -hmm. For the for the for the um, uh, the AIR, um, we get a kind of we get kind of interesting interdisciplinary um, 
um, opportunities. And I'm going to I'm going to quiet myself on these because I think Dr. Seymour would be better to kind of <laughs> illustrate what these are. But I, what I can do is sort of as a, as a tease say this year we have some that you know would have probably been unexpected in years past. Yes. And yes. that's a really exciting thing. Okay. Although the quality of the previous years is still uh, you know still matched by this year so I mean we've just we've just got um, an embarrassment of riches um, and just, in the AIR. And just great opportunities for further further um, uh, collaboration among the departments yeah. which will take place not only in a residency but it can also lead to more research yeah. opportunities and right. teaching so. And one of the disappointing things about the pandemic year is that we didn't have in-person opportunities for, say, faculty from art and design to interact with faculty from socio sociology, criminology, and anthropology. This gives us greater opportunities for that. And one of the things that we've seen, or I've seen, is that it was important for faculty from other departments just to really see what, because I mean, when you arrive on a campus, you know, as a you know journalist or a, you know English faculty member or uh, whatever, I mean, chances are you're going to spend a lot of time just with that yeah. department. You're not going to necessarily seek out people from other departments. You might, by kind of happenstance, you know, meet some people, but. Um, uh, this is this is this is what we need as a college. Um, uh, we need these opportunities just to kind of see one another and find out what what, what another's like. I mean, I think about it this way. Um, I am a, I am a great and devoted listener of all kinds of music, mm -hmm. but I have no e I have no ear, no eye, <laughs> no voice. I can't sing, I can't do any of this stuff. I have never taken a music class other than. Um, like a kind of music history class, music appreciation class. Um, and when I see what the, our students do, you know, in terms of like the classes they take and what that means, what that faculty has to do, has to provide um, for one-on-one -on -one instruction and studios, it, it kind of, it, 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 well, <laughs> in, a, in a real sense, it makes my head hurt to think about what those <laughs> students have to do. And what that faculty, what those faculty provide, but then that's important for me as the dean to kind of see, you know, that one size doesn't fit all for all these departments, and how can I make sure that resources are provided to uh, avail or to be availed so that all departments have everything they need to um, uh, um, to align their goals with um, uh, what they. Um, uh, um, what they do in the classroom for their students. So it's a great thing. It's a great thing to see what, what other departments are doing Absolutely. because it, it reminds you of like why you're happy that you picked the discipline yeah. that you selected. <laughs> but it shows that, um, uh, that uh, there's a lot of ways to get an education around yeah. here. So this show used to be about the College of Fine Arts and Communication. So I think our audience may not know a whole lot about the old CLA. Mm -hmm. Talk about Talk about the EDGE program, which will continue mm. in a different, uh, sort of a, yeah. I guess a different form. So EDGE stands for, okay, you're gonna bust me out on this. Educa um, diversity and global engagement. Yes, yes. Educating and de edu um, diversity and global engagement. And it was largely an initiative established by the Associate Dean Peter Mel, mm -hmm. who retired um, wisely <laughs> right before everything went went crazy, um, went awry, and um, so what? How that works is that there is a, there was at one point in time a, um, uh, a residence hall, mm -hmm. um, residential huge, college, residential college, yeah, residential college that was the Edge College. That has been combined now into the Muse College, which was the former Stars College, um, uh, which now- That's Short Denny. Short Denny, mm -hmm. that's right. The old CFAC residential yes. college. So now we have everybody who's interested in the two things together, which is, which is its own, I mean, its own sort of interesting little project. But, um, but what Dr. Mel really wanted to kind of establish was that any kind of student opportunity 
to engage in something like you know, learning more about diversity and global engagement. Um, because what he believed was that that was the kind of edge that our students, that the students from uh, the six humanities and social sciences departments had, was that they would have this as in an increasingly globalized you know, yeah. society, they would have this, they would have this edge. Um, but many times for things like internships, um, study abroad or study away, um, or service learning, mm -hmm. students would kind of shy away from those because they would, um, you know, uh, oftentimes if, if, you know, uh, if an internship's in Little Rock and, you know, you got to drive to and, to and from there and you don't have much money, you're going to say, well, you're going to kind of self-select out of that. And so this would, so there was a committee that would review um, applications for these opportunities um, for diversity, global engagement, and would provide um, funds for reimbursement or to help pay, to help defray costs and things like that. And so now what that, what that, of what the students in the College of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences have the opportunity to do is whether they're from uh, art and design, film theater and creative writing, music, or the School of Comm, is if they've got such an opportunity, such an idea, then they can apply as well. And so what we hope to do better this semester is make students aware of an, of an application deadline and then have them you know, send in those things. And I mean, I know that there's a lot of School of Comm students who do internships mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and those internships are easily and obviously sort of part of a kind of diversity or global engagement um, you know, initiative. So they'll have that chance too. Um, of course, I mean, what, we, what we're also trying to do is to raise funds for that to get that foundation account to, um, to um, um, well, to have, to have plenty of money in yeah, there for, sure. to provide for students. But um, uh, um, where that's one of the things we work on during um, uh, Day of Giving mm -hmm. and um, uh, other um, uh, advancement so programs. Tom, it was unfortunate, the timing, yeah, <laughs> for, the, for the birth of the college, July 1st, yeah. 2020. Yeah. But, um, I mean, was there was there some silver lining in that we could take our time to sort of uh, because we were sort of thrown right. together, right? Uh, unexpectedly. Yes, yes. Um, I know that, uh, and I know that uh, there's some who still think that uh, that it was done in a manner that could have been could have been done better but you know we we, we are all, as we are often given you know we the circumstances we have are the circumstances we have yes. and i think that in the spring of 2020 i thought because at that point in time i was acting dean of cfac as well as the dean of cla that that would be the that would be the warm up the kind transition of uh, semester. the transition semester but that was not that was not that was not the case um, either i of course had um, an own my own health issues that uh, kind of took me out of uh, that um, um, seat uh, but um, what it did, I mean, I guess, you know, if, if it is probably better to, um, to light a candle than to curse the darkness. Um, and it is easier to look at last year as a, as a transition year and um, a way to kind of see, uh, like one of the things that Dr. Seymour and I did, we, we met, I don't, think, I don't think many deans do this, but we met with every department in, I mean, oftentimes twice in one semester, but at least once a semester. Um, and talked to them and heard their concerns and tried to be um, tried to be as um, uh, as open to these concerns as possible, while at the same time trying to kind of advance this idea that um, that yes, I mean 
I mean, there are. I mean, it's funny to me because there's there seems to be several camps, and this is this is among students too. Dr. Seymour and I were talking about this that um, you know there were there were a lot of students when this was announced, especially from the School of Communication, who were very disappointed. <laughs> because the school or the college school of okay. uh, communication were because they were because communication wasn't in the name which it formerly had been and I can understand that um, but uh, one of the things that um, uh, we kind of uh, heard sort of often from from everybody was that we kind of started to assemble these these groups that there's some people who really just felt as though for one reason or another, that um, they they're just they're really kind of struck by this and 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 were um, not not pleased, not happy, and sort of resistant to the change. There was another part, probably equally of this of the same proportion, who was really excited about it and really wanted to do a lot of work with it. And then there was a big group in the middle who just didn't care. <laughs> and I don't want to say that they're apathetic. But they're going to do their own work. They're going to stick. They're going to teach their classes, and the effect that the the, new, the name change or the college change would have on them was negligible. So, how then to communicate to all those three groups in ways that gives a sense of cohesion? And that's a really that's a really difficult job because it's three very different audiences and it's three different kinds of communication. And I think that we're still on that. We're still in the way with that. Mm -hmm. um, we're still trying to find that. But, you know, we had a year to kind of begin to Dr. Seymour and I to really start to think about, OK, how do we talk mm -hmm. to these three groups? Mm -hmm. How do we make it possible for these three groups to see that their best um, their best way forward is, 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 is together. And I think a big part of this is just getting to know each other. They've, they've had a year to work together mm -hmm. via Zoom probably uh, right. on committees. On committees, yes. Um, and so I, I, I'm looking, I'm, I'm in the part that's, that's, that's enthusiastic about seizing the opportunities. Right. I can see all kinds of, right. uh, of, right. of, of great. Right. Uh, well, and I think that it has to do with a lot of, you know, like it, I think it has to do with the person who, who, or is part of a discipline that already has kind of, as yours does, uh, Dr. Stevens, that has a kind of connections to other things mm -hmm. already, you know. And mine is too, and Dr. Seymour's is, and I think that that's one of the things that kind of makes it easier on us. There's some people who don't, who just don't have that, and I and I appreciate that and understand it. And it's it's a matter of it's a matter of convincing, a matter of um, you know. Uh, making making the case that at the end of the day this is a, this will be a good thing for um, individuals and uh, individual departments and above all and I don't want to make I don't want to sound like I'm just pitching it to one audience in particular but above all for our students mm, absolutely because I think that um, to have for example um, a major in the arts and a minor in humanities yeah. or social sciences m probably makes you a little bit more attractive on the job market. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, one of the things that we always talk about is like what makes our students more attractive on the job market. And we, none of us have been on the job market in a long time, <laughs> or at least the kind of private sector job market that students are entering. But what we hear from individuals in the private sector, I mean, uh, like people I talk to on the board of trustees and our, um, uh, um, uh, board of um, or our kind of a, a, a advisory, advisory council, mm -hmm. you know, they say that you know, like they just look, they're just looking for people who, who really know how to, you know, who know how to write well, know how to speak mm -hmm. well. Big, th big thing I always talk about is that, you know, can, they can work, they can yeah. work in teams, and um, that's that's something that I know personally. Um, you know, we're often asked to do, to work in teams. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that means, you know, you're somebody who is listening to the leader and getting things done, or sometimes it's you're taking the kind of, that kind of leadership position. But um, it's, it, it's, it's not surprising to me, especially given the sort of way that um, uh, the workplace has just changed in this last year, that, yeah. you know, being able to be somebody who can, uh, <laughs> 
who can who can take a who can take on a project and maybe be working with somebody that they never actually enter exactly. the same room with. Exactly. Yeah. Well, it's a it's, it's a great thing. opportunity, I think, for uh, like you said, our students and, and each other. Uh, yep. uh, Spotlight is going to m much of what Spotlight has taken on in the past will continue. We're going to have Amanda Horton to talk about the Reynolds season. Yes. We're going to talk to Gail Seymour about uh, artists and residents. We have a new associate dean, Paige Rose, mm -hmm. who will be familiar to our viewers. And then we're going to get down into each department and and, and visit uh, individually. Oh, that's great. It's going to be a good yeah. it's going to be a good year at Spotlight. So. Mm -hmm. Tom, thanks for joining us, uh, and we'll we'll have you back soon. Sure, love to. Thank you, Donna. So join us again next time for Spotlight.